Whatever has not killed you cannot kill you. It cannot kill you. The place where we read. This man was on a journey. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Ooh. And this man encountered several robbers. Destiny robbers. Which you have to consider today. The first destiny robber and robbers of destiny are evil men. Someone say evil men. Evil man. Jeremiah chapter 5 verse 26 say, Among my people, there are wicked men. 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 When you study your Bible, the Bible said the first person that saw this man on the way was a priest. The second was a Levite. Who is a priest? A priest is one that's supposed to be a custodian, one an intercessor, one that should plead. This priest saw this man, sir. Do you know between those people, those that beat up the man on the way, the robbers that robbed him on the way, between them and the priest, the man felt more pain. Can I shock you? The, <laughs> the betrayer of Judas was not as hurtful as the denier of Peter. That was when Peter denied, Jesus turned and looked at him. It's not as hurtful as the denier of Peter. The same people, I'm sure that this man was half dead. When the priest came around, the man must have been expecting the priest to do something about him. And the priest came, looked at him and walked away. If you wouldn't help me, why did you look at me? There are people, I was asking myself, why did this priest just come to look at him? And the Lord was telling to tell me, there are people that look at your situation, hear about it so that they can spread it. There are people that look at your situation, hear about it so they can tell people about it. We are in a generation where today you tell somebody something in the church, it has become a topic. A generation in many churches that a person opened up to a pastor, what he told the pastor become the message of the pastor. A generation where people are dying in silence. We ask them, what are you going through? They say nothing. They keep quiet. Because the people, the priests, the expect to help them came. Only looked at them and walked away. Looked at them and turned their back. Looked at them. Am I speaking to somebody here? If you cannot help me, why are you questioning me? If you cannot help me, why asking me questions? If you cannot help me, why explain me? If you cannot help me, why looking at me? Look at them! And walk away. This was supposed to be somebody that should have been there for them. You know, I told them in London, listen, listen the Bible says two people you must love. He said, love your neighbors. And he said, love your neighbors as yourself. And he also said, love your enemy. Because God knows that among your neighbors are your enemy. Among your neighbors are your enemies. Life is like a lift, an elevator. As you go up, you must continually stop, open, and let some people out. A good enemy, a good enemy is better than a bad friend. You can surround yourself with negative people and expect a positive destiny. When you go through pain, listen to me now, when you go through pain or go through a shaking or through a slander or through any form of attack and you suddenly discover that all your friends have left you, sir, ma, they didn't actually leave you. You have only discovered you never truly had a friend. People don't leave you when they are not there. It's only those who are there that leave. It is adversity Adversity is the test of friendship. Any friend not tested can be trusted. <laughs> In this end time, I don't know if I can talk to you. You all are just writing, writing back to back. Everybody's just writing so much this morning. The only way to keep, <laughs> the only way to keep a lot of people with you is not to test them. The only way to keep a lot of people with you is not to test them. 
People don't understand that loyalty and commitment to relationship is a virtue. It's character. It's a true test of character. Billy Graham said, when wealth is lost, nothing is lost. When health is lost, something is lost. When character is lost, everything is lost. I repeat that. When wealth is lost, nothing is lost. When health is lost, something is lost. When character is lost, everything. Evil men. There are people today in their lives that are evil men. Who came? A Samaritan came. And the Samaritan, let me explain something to you now. This man, Okaparata, this man was stopped between Jerusalem and Jericho. He was in between. A Samaritan came. Who is a Samaritan? A Samaritan is one who is despised rejected and ignored by the Jew because he's not a full Jew. A Samaritan is one who is a partial Jew. Mother, Jew, father, Samaria. Or father, Samaria, mother, Jew. Are you following what I'm talking about? It's like the mulattoes. You know the mulattoes? Those who, they are, the literal street word for them is Afghast. You know them, right? When they say the mother here, father here. Do you know when those people stand, when they stand before, focus on me, when they stand before the white people, the white people see them as black. Black people see them as white. So they are in between. The Samaritans are despised and rejected because they are in between. The Samaritans are despised and rejected because they are not, they are not Jews. They are not full Jews. They are not full Sam Samarians. That is why when that man saw somebody who was in between Jericho and in between Jerusalem, someone who was in between, he could relate because that person was somebody going through what he was going through. It only takes somebody who has been through your pain to understand your pain. It only takes somebody who has been through what you are going through. Through. This Samaritan understood. He knew what it means to hang in the balance. He knew what it means to be in between life so he could relate. Can I say this to you? Your today's misery is your tomorrow's ministry. Any pain you are going through today, your, your, <laughs> your calling is in your experience. Your going to is in your going through. The Samaritan say, I can relate. I know what it means to be in between. I know what it means to be rejected. I know what it means to be abandoned. I know what it means to be ignored. I know what it means for all hell to break loose. Against. I know, I know. I know what it is. 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 Hear me and hear me well. The Samaritan, <laughs> that Samaritan knows what it is. He knew what it is to be rejected. That was why he could relate. He could relate. He could relate. He could relate. He knew what it means to be abandoned. Listen to me. You are helped to help others. Anytime God helps you, he wants you to help others. Anything you are going through in life today is a revelation, a definition of where you are going to. Do you know those that will be rich? Money has to first punish them. Anybody today who has no money, who is going through financial hardship, it is a proof of a solid financial future. Financial wonder begins with financial blunder. It's a proof. A woman called Maya Musk in South Africa. She's an American, went to South Africa, married a, woman, a man there. And the man stood up against, against her, moved out of the home. She had three children, Tosca, Elon, and Kimball. Those were her children. She did five jobs. Imagine a woman doing five jobs to be able to raise her children. Five jobs to raise her two sons. To raise her, her, her only daughter. Five jobs she kept doing. After staying there for a long time, she relocated to America and started working hard in America. Today, the second child is called Elon. Elon Musk, the richest man on the face of the earth. What, 230 billion US dollars. And how did that happen? On a platform of rejection. On a platform of scarcity. On a platform of pain. There was a man called Benson. The father was called John. When he was born, he was sickly. The father spent all his money treating the boy. One night, the father took the boy and told the mother, go outside and bury him. He is too sick. He is too sick. He is too sick. He is always sick. He is too sick. He is always sick. And the mother went outside and called upon God. He said, God, I don't know you, but I know that there is something 
about him, about this boy. That's why the devil always attacks him. And that young man grew up and became a healing minister. He grew up to become Benson Idahosa. He grew up to become a healing man of God. Because in your misery is your ministry. In your pain is your calling. Whatever you are going to, listen, whatever you are going through now is the problem you were created to solve. Ah, yeah, 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 ta, 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 ta. The Samaritan could relate. He could relate because he knows what it means to hang in the limbo. Not to be a Jew, not to be a Samaritan. So he also knew what it means not to have arrived Jericho, but to be on, on transit from Jerusalem. There are some of you today. God is God is making you go through things so that you can know how to help people. Can I surprise you? When the Samaritan saw him, when he saw the man, the Bible said he poured oil. Am I correct? He bounded him. How did he know how to treat him? Because he has been there. How could he know how to treat him? Because he has been there before. I'm over Kapashita Kao. Nobody's following what I'm talking about. He has been in that shoes. Hmm. Sometimes God will allow people to go through rejection. God will allow people to go through. God will allow people to go through rejection. Go through pain. So that you know how to speak to people. You know how to relate. Why did he send Jesus to planet Earth? Because Jesus, Jesus had to come, become man to know what it feels. That is why Hebrews 4.15 says we are not an high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Jesus went through it. Jesus went through the pain. Jesus went through the shaking. Jesus went through the hardship so that he can relate. When you say, Jesus, I'm tired, he understands because he was tired. Jesus, I am hungry, he understands because he was hungry. Jesus, I've been betrayed, he understands because he was betrayed. You must get to understand that. Am I talking to somebody here? Am I talking to somebody here? A survivor is paired for the survival of others. A survivor is paired and kept alive for the survival of others. You know, I was looking at the priest. Eh? Do you know what I think? The priest came the Bible said, looked at him. I'm sure the priest considered to treat this man, to transport this man. It will take a lot. I'm not ready. There are many who are not identifying now with your down state because they know to get you lifted, they will contribute. So they are going to a corner waiting for you to be lifted before they can come back. Uh, nobody saw what I'm talking about. There are many, do you know there are many people in many branches of church who their pastor will stand with them, identify with them. They now have a baby. They want to look for a bigger church to do their Thanksgiving. Because they feel that that church is not enough to attract class. Or, or their friends don't like that church. So they can't identify with that church. That same church that is small, that same church that people don't like, is the church that stood by you. Is the church that identified with you. Is the church that projected you. Is the church that made you what you are. Anybody that don't like what you like is not deserving of you. It's not supposed to be around you. If you don't like what I like to hell with you, am I speaking to somebody here? If you don't like who I like to hell with you, you were not there when they labored for me. You were not there when they stood by me. You were not there when they identified with me. In fact, your appearing now is because of my arrival. One of the reasons when I see people I knew in the past, I spot them, I trace them, is because those are the reference. Ah, those are the real friends. There are so many of you who do not understand. Now God has lifted you and your class, your level, your status has changed. So you feel you feel you don't need certain people anymore. You feel, you feel that some people are now beneath you. No, those are the real people. They knew you before the class. They knew you before the status. They knew you before your lifting. They knew you before the financial breakthrough. They knew you before God gave you a car. The, those people who were your former slab trek. I'm, I'm trying to be honorable. <laughs> you know, there, are people, there are people who are members of NTA, National Trekkers Association. <laughs> and God has now made them members of VOA, Vehicle Owners Association. 
and there were people that were trekking and walking with you but now you just blow empty blow empty you blow empty you wave them you blow empty. if you don't appreciate god for where you are coming from you will go back there i wish i was communicating right now i wish i was communicating right now hey a samaritan despised abandoned he came this man must have been expecting a priest to help him must have been oh my god must have been expecting a priest to support him a priest there are so many of you you already have predetermined mental helpers you already have people who in your mind you think this is where help will come from you already have people in your mind you think this who will change my story this who, no god said no 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 don't build your hope on anybody what is it that trust in man don't make any man an idol where you never thought help would come from is your help is coming from who you never thought would help you is who will help you i like what mordecai said to esther he said if thou holdest thyself together at such a time he said help shall arise from another place esther chapter 4 and the 16 help shall arise from another place enlargement shall arise where you never expected it to come from jesus has crisscrossed and transversed through the length and breadth of jericho to judea to bethlehem he had ministered from the the, 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 the shores of philistine and he had pushed his feet had become sore his feet needed to be refreshed the disciples were around him they saw his soiled feet but they did nothing about him because familiarity has brought contempt and god in the midst of that brought a woman she came with an alabaster box of ointment what friends could not do god brought a stranger what colleagues could not do god brought a stranger there are some of you you have family members you have colleagues you have relatives in places senators house of rep members governors House of Assembly members, local government chairmen, people in business, entrepreneurs, DGs of places, bank managers, you have people who you expected to help you and none of them have done anything. Heaven said I should tell you, where you never expected help, help is coming from another place. Help is coming from strange quarters. Help is coming from where you never expected, where you never thought help would come. Why we look not on the things which are seen, but on the things which are not seen, for the things which we see are temporal, but the things we don't see are internal. Help is coming. We are you never expected. Help is coming. We are you never thought. Help is coming. We are you never imagined. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. He's the same yesterday. He's the same today. He's the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Glory is on your side. Favor is on your side. Lifting is on your side. Somebody shall help is coming. I can hear you help is coming. Say help is coming. Say help is coming. I can hear you help is coming. I can hear you help is coming. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take your seat. Sir, this man, this man, they never expected. Because of what that man went through, he knew how to relate. When, oh my God, how do I say this now? Listen. God can only entrust those he trusts. Those not trusted should not be entrusted. The man said, I like this, I like this, I like this. Those not tested should not be entrusted. Do you know what the Samaritan said? The Samaritan deposited two pence. That was all he had. And he said, I'm going. Any money you spend, he told those taking care of the man, any money you spend on him, when I come back, I will do what? I will repay. Now, this man had no money. So where will he get money to repay from? The man knew. So long I am a people's person, so long I have a heart to help people, as I am going, help also is waiting for me. How did he know he was going to get money? He knew that so long my heart is open to help people, as I am leaving my house, the God of heaven, the angel Yabakata, the angels are A young man met me, he had, he had a politician, 
that he was working with and the politician didn't treat him well. And he said to me, he said, Daddy, I have all these secrets and I hate such statements. He said, I have all these secrets. I'm going to expose him. And so is he. He mentioned the name of the person. I said, leave him alone. He said, why? Because I know the man. He's a philanthropist. He helps people. I said, any man who is a blessing to people, don't fight him. I know, don't fight him. Because the prayers working for him is more than the attacks intended against him. I said, this one that has built school, built this, built that. I said, if he has not helped you, then something's wrong with you. What did you do <laughs> that stopped the help? I did some investigation. I was shocked that he's the one that deserved to be dealt with. You know, there are people that think that supporting them is an entitlement. Sit down. They think it's an entitlement. That you have to support them. They think you owe them. I don't know why. why I don't know why the poor think the rich owes them. I don't know why the poor think that the rich owes them. Look at him. He just, he just, he just bought, bought a new car. When he, should, when he should give the car to the poor. You are wearing shoe. Have you given your shoe to the poor? Start it. We will we'll follow you. Start it. There's this the African have this entitlement. And I've taught you before. When somebody is blessed by God. And he blesses you. Stop checking what he gave you to compare his size. How can this billionaire give me 10,000? Free 10,000 is 10,000. Whether from a billionaire or a papanya. Free 10,000 is 10,000. Whether from a rich or from a poor. Focus on the value of the money. Not the, the worth of who is giving you. It's a wrong mindset that has made people lose helpers. Focus on the worth of the money. On the value of the money. Not the worth of who is giving you. Say look what he gave me. And it is worth so and so on. Are you Forbes? I'm telling you why people lose helpers. Entitlement. There's this entitlement. People think privilege as rights. If God gives you an avenue where you are getting, how do they call it? Daily 2K. Your daily 2K. Hold it tight. Because that person that is telling you you are not getting enough is actually looking for that little you are getting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Then your eye, be, when you mess up, your eye become clear. You see the reality of life. You see the reality of life. By the time you mess that place, Sakpa is your portion. <laughs> By the time you mess that place, you know what they call Sakpa? So far. When you mess that place up, you will not be manipulated from your help. You will not be manipulated from your help. This marriage, I can imagine a single lady is advising the married one. Rubbish. That's why I'm not married, though. No man can talk to me like this. Then you, a married woman, say, Are you serious? Leave him. Can you, see, can you see me? Look me. Look me, Tracy, baby. Mama Tracy. Any man that mess me up, I push it to you, man. If the man come like that again, give it to him hard. So by the time the man come, you try to give him hard, the correct punch on your teeth and two teeth disappear from your mouth. Am I talking to somebody here? Two teeth disappear. By the time you open your teeth like that, you don't have 32, you have 28. Because of, the, of, of stupidity and refusal to listen to the right person. The man knew that as I'm going, as I'm going so long, I think well of... Listen to me. I'm saying this with all humility to God. And I'm humble about it. Nobody can kill me. That person has not been born. Nobody. Anyone who attempts me as signed to die. That's the truth. I've said it before. Anyone who attempts me as signed to see pain. Because, number one, you cannot get me. And number two, I will come after you. I'm not nice like that. So I will pursue you till you finish. I will carry you as a, a course, a, a project, a project. Till you finish. My wife was talking to me and said to me, said, the way you hold people, calm down. I said, only no. Anybody who attempt me, that person's family, like I said, their family should be made to feel pain for raising up useless children. 
there are some children that will cause disaster. They should not have given birth to them. I'm being honest. Why am I saying what I'm saying? When you are a people's person, you cannot be extincted. Because the laws of death, we have a discussion with the laws of life. What is his value? What is our value on the earth? What, what would be the vacuum? Am I speaking to somebody here? Me speaking like this does not mean I live carelessly, I live anyhow, and I'm bragging. No, I live with the, within the pressings of God's word, but I live with the audacity and understanding. Someone said to me, you are in an Islamic land, and you are talking. Were you not worried that somebody else could just stand up from the crowd and open fire? I said, you think the person is not worried as he's standing up? Somebody else by him is standing up to open fire on him. Am I speaking to somebody here? I said, do you know how how saturated we are be careful because you don't know who is sitting next to you <laughs> you have no idea who is sitting next to you that's the ones you can see just imagine the ones that are sitting that you cannot see before am I communicating here this man was trusted. And relate. Evil friends. But despite what happened to the Samaritan, he was on a journey. Despite what the Samaritan went through as a Samaritan, rejected by the Jews, he was on a journey. Sir, nothing in life that has happened to you should destabilize you from taking decisions personal decisions no matter what you have been through in life sir still set your heart on a journey even if you see rejection i can make it even if you see failure i can make it even if you see, if you see frustration i can make it am i speaking to somebody right now a righteous man falleth seven times and riseth up again rejoice not over me oh my enemy for if i fall i will arise when i sit in darkness the lord shall be my life Light. Have you not heard? Have you not known that the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither fainted nor is he weary? For there's no searching to his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. The young man may fall and the youth may utterly fail. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not go weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Am I speaking to somebody? We say, but for me, I am filled with might and the spirit of the Lord to declare to Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Hear me and hear me, child of God. The path of the just is like a shining light that shineth more and more, even unto a perfect day. It doesn't matter the shame, the pain, the rejection, the ridicule that I see is a pointer. There is something God has ordained for my life. I am on a journey. Nothing can stop me. I am going somewhere. Nothing can stop me. I know the thoughts I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. There is a plan of God for my life. There's an agenda of God for my life. God said it. I believe it and that settles it the devil is a liar he doesn't care though holes rise against me my heart shall not fear though war rise up against me if this will not be confident what thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord to behold his face be a child of God everyone under the sound and influence of my voice don't let the devil mess up your future don't let the devil make you give up refuse to give up I will not give up it's my problem that will give up I will not give up. My enemies will give up. I will not give up. My battles will give up. I will not give up. My pain will give up. Am I speaking to somebody and overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony and they love not their life unto death? You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today. He is the same forever. When God says yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up. No man can bring you down. God is on your side. Yahweh is on your side. Love is on your side. Love is on your side. Love is on your side. Yahweh 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 is on your side. Somebody shout yes, 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 yes. Somebody shout yes, 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 yes. Somebody shout yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, 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 oh,
listen. 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 The faithfulness of the devil cannot stop the faithfulness of God. The fake, fake, fake. The fakefulness. Satan is fakeful. God is faithful. The fakefulness of the devil cannot stop the faithfulness. You see, we are carnivorous messengers. We are not domestic children. Battle is our habitat. We are wired to fight and conquer, not to stoop to conquer. There's a generation of people, God raises them via battles. He surrounds them with warfare. Because the throne and crown ahead of them should be deserving. Should be deserving. And when people see your greatness and they see your track record of battles, they say, no wonder. When they see your track record of battles, they say, please, please. Yeah. She deserves it. They see you in a happy home. They say, no wonder. She had a lot of heartbreak. She deserves to be happy. We are not domestic children. We are carnivorous messengers. God raises us. Our, our ambience. Listen, it's a rule down in the midst of that enemy. There's a generation. There's a generation, he tells, sit at my right hand until I make the enemy their footstool. And there's a group, he tells, rule down. Not, you are not domesticated. I'm not rearing you. I'm raising you. I'm raising you in the midst of battles. You will see battles. If nobody bothers you, it means you are nobody. If you are fighting nothing, it means you are going nowhere. Satan is envious and jealous. He's aggressive. He will not spare a man with a future. I told you some Sundays ago that Satan is a wise investor. He is too business minded to go for anyone who carries nothing. Satan is a wise investor. He's a businessman. He's too business minded to go for somebody who carries nothing. If there is nothing you carry, Satan is too business minded to come for you. When the devil sees that there's something you carry, he goes for you. He's ready to trade anything to get that thing. But when there's nothing inside, it's like a particular nation of the world. Before they interfere in any dispute, something they have to gain. Are you following what I'm talking about? There's something they have to gain. Look at the war in Syria. They have never said a word. They kept quiet. They have never said anything. But as soon as Ukraine, Libya, they got interested. Are you following what I'm talking about? Who is that shout in America? I think I need to teach some of you people because I like, don't understand. It's not America. America is a, is a continent. Brazil is America. Puerto Rico is America. Bahamas is America. But there's something called United... Mexico is America. Canada is America, but it's not America. But there's something called United States. USA is different from America. USA is 52 states. But when you say America, I'm going to America. If you say you're going to America, it can be Mexico. Can be, <laughs> can be Brazil. Can be Costa Rica. Can be Cuba. So when you, you say I'm going to United States. So because somebody is shouting America, America. No. America. Okay. Sit down. Have I educated you? Have I educated you? The first robber of destiny, evil friend. Number two, he said, and he came there and saw him. The second robber of destiny is demonic covering. The man could only help him because he saw him. Demonic covering. There are people today who are not helped because something has covered them. There are businesses that are covered. There are shops that are covered. There are academic institutions that are covered. There are certificates that are covered. There are jobs, environments that are covered. 
There are people hearing the sound of my voice. Nobody comes to check what you are selling because a power has covered it. There are some of you, nobody sees you to help you because they have covered you. There are some young ladies, it is abnormal for a lady to stay, a marriageable lady to stay. One year, nobody's asking you out. Why would people ask you out? You are created to be asked out. A woman is created, a lady is created to be asked out. Then you make a decision to say yes or no. If nobody's asking you out at all, it's not a proof of decency, it's a proof of evil covering. It's not a proof of decency. It's a proof of something has covered you. Nobody is seeing you. Nobody is seen because there is an evil covering. That man could not be helped until he was saved. He said, he saw him. He saw him. Many are covered. There are many young ladies who are covered. Men don't see them as women. Men see them as men. And in the same society, a man cannot marry a man. There is a covering. I've told you I prayed for somebody. Sometimes I was about praying for somebody. Many years ago when I just started going to South Africa and there was someone in the wheelchair. He was crying. White guy. He was crying. The way he was crying attracted me. Others were just lifting their hands, expecting healing. But he was crying. So I took off the mic. I said, calm down. What's the problem? He was crying. Crying. A woman was by his side trying to console him. I said, how did you get on the wheelchair? He told me. He said he was going to see a friend. He decided to pass a bush path that was closer to his destination. But it was a little bit bushy. As he was passing that spot, he said, suddenly somebody said, I can see it, I can see it, I can see it. Boom! And they shot. And when they ran to him, they screamed, they said, oh, he is a human being. Satan turned a man into an antelope in the eyes of people. Covered him. Covered him. And they shot him on the west. He was crying. He was crying. There's an evil covering. There are people today who are covered. You are wondering why nobody is favoring you because something has covered you. You are wondering why nobody is helping you because someone has covered you. You are wondering why nobody is assisting you. Someone has covered you. There's a demonic covering, a satanic covering that organizes you. You are a makeup artist. You are very good in your craft. Nobody is coming. You are a good footballer. No, no, no plug is hiring you because you are covered. Something covered you. You are anointed by God and nobody comes around the church because something has covered it and make a declaration if your faith is open and your heart is open to the person that will shout the loudest amen that evil covering catch fire 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 that witchcraft covering catch fire That demonic covering catch fire That evil covering catch fire I command it catch fire I command it catch fire Somebody shot fire Somebody shot fire Somebody shot fire Somebody shot fire Jesus, we don't believe of Jesus. Every evil covering, every evil covering, catch fire, catch fire. Every evil covering, every evil covering in my life, in my life, covering my wealth, covering my wealth, covering my lifting, covering my lifting, covering my prosperity, covering my prosperity, covering my greatness, covering my greatness. Catch fire, catch fire, catch fire, catch fire. I prophesy upon you. I don't know what you do, but I command whatever is covering your lifting, catch fire. As we connect to this declaration, wherever you are watching me from, as you connect to it, it catches fire now. 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 Fire now, it catches fire now. 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 It catches f
Shatter it catches fire. Covered. What's another word for covered? Hid. Right? Right? To be hidden. There are people. Look at this. And Satan only hides those with outstanding, productive, inventful destinies. Speaking of Moses, Exodus chapter 2, I believe, verse 2. He said the mother hid him for three months because he saw he was a proper child. What's an improper child? Hid him. So coverings can be in two dimensions. Another one for coverings to be hidden. He said the mother hid him. So somebody can be behind the covering. Somebody, a human hand, can be involved in the covering. Number two. If you study your Bible, in Genesis chapter 3 from verse 8 to verse 10, Adam hid himself, and God said, where are thou? He said, I heard that voice in the garden. I hid myself because I was what? Naked. So, someone can also be the architect of the evil covenant. You can be the one hiding yourself by your character. There are people that are very rebellious. That's why prophecy can't work for them. For example, look at this. This is the first Sunday of the month. And every church of our church, is every member is supposed to sit down in church. When your father wants to advise you, you come together. You don't sit at home, say, I will watch life at home. You don't sit at home, say, I will watch life at home. Oh, it's life service today. So, I'll be at home and be watching. No! You go to the church. You sit down. Your pastor is seated. When Jacob wanted to advise his children. The Bible says he gathered all of them in Genesis 49. Are you following me? So for a member to sit at home and said, I will watch life from my phone at home. I can, oh, you are an OFM member. You are rebellious. You are rebellious. First Sunday, your father talks to you. Sit down. That's the place, that, that's the day the church should be more packed full. That's the day everybody can want to hear from our father in the Lord. They know rebellion tell you stay at home. Rebellion is terrible. Oh. Rebellion makes people take their own decision in the midst of a general decision. Rebellion. That is why to be around the grace and anointing, it doesn't work for them. Lay hands on them, lay leg on them, carry oil put on their head. If I carry them, put inside oil until they become plantain chips. But today, nothing will work. Rebellion. When we honor men, we honor our pastors and honor men of God. We are not honoring them. We are honoring what is inside them. When we honor men of God, when we honor our pastors, we are honoring. When you see somebody kneeling down, he's older. The pastor is like his grandchild, like a grandchild. But she's kneeling down to say, good morning, daddy. It's not that pastor she's kneeling for. She's kneeling for the God who called him. When you see the person, hold on. Yes, sir, I can hear you. You see, you are listening, you are, you, are, you, are, you are obeying. When the police stops you, they stop here. They're not stopping for the police, they're stopping for the uniform. It's not the police. It doesn't matter if the police is like this. Oh, yes. Back! 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 
Man is coming like this. She, she, she. I, I stop you with our stop. It decrease. It decrease. Back. You are honoring the uniform. Because that is government. The same officer come without the uniform, say under arrest, say, show me your warrant. With uniform. That is why even fake police, fake police may fake. Why do you think robbers wear soldier uniform? Because they know that's what will make you stop. Somebody come as, as robber. You wear a t-shirt, armed robber, he's still on the road. You will stop. Carry gun. He put armed robber. He's still on the road. <laughs> but he has, to, he has to wear a police uniform. So when we honor men, we honor the grace. You see me lie flat, oh great father. I'm not them. I'm not greeting them. I'm honoring their years. Giving them their due. Do you know what it means to be? Do you know what it means to be a man? Do you know the sacrifice? A few of my pastors travel around with me and they break down. They fall sick. I don't blame them. It's what I've done over the years. So my bodies are custom. But you know the sacrifice it is? You know the sacrifice it is? So I imagine what these men have been through. Are you following what I'm saying? The pain, the labor. They're over years, over the years. And they're still standing. That is your pastor. Labors. Some of you don't know that the, the, the once that pastor of your local church, if you know the attack is going through because of you. The powers that are fighting you saw a shelter, so they came for him. They came for him. The man is praying. The man is fasting. And you still sit down and open your mouth. That's your mouth. That's your big mouth. You still open it. And begin to run down your pastor. Run down his wife. It's only pastor me I respect to. I don't have time for mommy. So you honor pastor. You don't have time for the wife. And you want to stay in that church. You will suffer now. The way to a man's heart is not his stomach. Not all men are glutons. The way to a man's heart is to like his wife. Not all men are glutons. All this, the way to a man's heart is his stomach. Not all men are glutons. All men don't eat. Like you. You want us to talk your matter. <laughs> I don't know who that is anyway. <laughs> so that's what is Now, there, there are people... No matter, something has covered them. But this is the reason we are all listening to this message. Anything that covered you, if you have a hand in it, mercy speaks for you. If it is the finger of an individual, let that hand be roasted by fire. Hey, Take your seat. The third robber of destiny, and I'm going to pray. The Bible, are you getting something? The Bible says, and saw him and had compassion. The third robber of destiny is hardness of heart. Hardness, hardened heart is a destiny robber. Hardened heart. Hardened. You need God to touch the heart of those or then to help you until God pricks compassion. And a generation today that has become so wicked and heartless. So wicked and heartless. No compassion. No compassion. Do you know why God... Hold on. Hold on. Are you getting something? What did Samaritan say? Samaritan said, Take these two pens as I am leaving. When I come back, I will repay you. He had nothing on him. He was going. He knew... When there is compassion, there is provision. If you want to see constant provision, you need permanent compassion. There are people today who are not enjoying provision because they are, they are compassion bankrupt. There are people in the church today. Hear me, everybody, Omega children, hear me. There are people in church who the only the only need in church they don't meet is the one they don't see. Why do we ordain, why do we ordain people to become ordained ministers? We do ordain you to be ordained ministers to gossip. Ordained minister, your duty is to make sure the pastor is well taken care of. How can ordained ministers be there? There's no food in pastor's house. 
What kind of misplaced oil is that? Or that, that the first thing, the meat, the pulpit, then the pew. Every of them means that so they must make sure there is a strategy device for pastor's kitchen. Every month, this one I put in the pastor's house. He doesn't have to ask you. I was seated on my own. They are, they, are, they are air conditioning the children's church now. The other church. They say they want us to be using it. It's one family in this church. One. One family. That came and said, God said, the tens and tens of millions. One family. They, I never said anything. Compassion. One family just came and said, Papa, we'll do this. What will it cost? They should give us the cost. Tens and tens of say, air conditioning that, that place. We need to preserve this place for a long time. I said, we can't, we can't do major meetings there because it's, it's, it's hot. They said, let's put air conditions everywhere. We'll take care of it. I said, wow. They said, even the new global office will put air condition there. You know how much that costs? One family. And there are people, nothing from there. She buy nothing from them. I said, that church. You're laughing. I sat down now. They brought bill for me. 2.3 million. Diesel. 2.27. Diesel. People sit there in free bus. Every Sunday. Every program. Free bus. Diesel. Uh, they'll carry to and fro. And look at how much they are spending for diesel. And coming from the church. And we'll pay the drivers. We'll buy parts for bus. That one is only for that department. That's not for other departments every week. Every week. Am I communicating here? Every week. Then somebody has, what will it take somebody on his own to say, everything concerning diesel, leave it for us. But hardness, when prayer is coming, MM! MM! Papa, touch me, touch me. Papa, touch me, touch me. Papa, touch me. <laughs> Anointing is not hamatan. Holy Ghost is not pepper soup. <laughs> your pastor in that your local church. Since you became a pa you know why you're talking like this? Listen to me. You know, when you talk like this, people think you need from them. How many of you know that this ministry is blessed? No. It's for your good. Do you know the, do you know the wickedness? In, do you know how Satan keeps some people poor? They already, if, imagine a pastor is giving a bill in his branch. And people will tell him, Equator already has. No need to give them. Can't you see poverty? Is it not we are a land that is fertile that you sow to? Don't you want to be like Equator? You say the man already has. Don't give to him. Let me tell you, even God gives to those who already have. To he that has, more shall be given. Because we sow into fertile places. But a, an ordained, a misplaced oil of an ordained minister. That will be the first reaction. They don't know that I need more than everybody. Because there are people, that we, there are missionaries, there are projects everywhere. So that's when I see you in the church, you come to church, you attend Papa and my children, no, we need accommodation. Government. It is the duty of government. It's not my duty. Why are you laughing? It's the duty of government to give you accommodation. No, don't think because I give people by the Spirit, that means that's who I am naturally. No, I'm not. It's the Holy Ghost that tells me to help people. So don't travel all the way down. Listen, this may, may be debatable, but the husband man is the partaker of the first fruit. If I'm to give accommodation to anybody, I will give to Omega members that I know need accommodation. I won't give to a stranger and leave my people. I won't do that. So if you're already here because you need accommodation, you want to see me at the end of the service, I'm already answering you now before the service ends. Because we're in a generation where they take advantage. Come and know my God, not my money. Come and serve Jesus. Don't come and ask me for money. Meet me to lay hands on you for your life to be in order. Ah, yeah, yeah. Why is this man just talking arrogantly? If you are not arrogant, you won't pick arrogance in a nice statement. It takes arrogance to pick arrogance in a very sincere, honest statement. 
This apostle self, I don't even like him. <laughs> Do I like you? <laughs> this apostle self, I don't even like him. Do I like you? The feeling is mutual. <laughs> I don't know you, so I don't like you. I only like those I know. <laughs> so, there are some people that are so funny. Apostle, I've said, I've said, I don't like him. I don't like him. People you like, how much have you given them? <laughs> what is the economic value of your like? <laughs> ah, I used to like him before. He was my role model. <laughs> you are a criminal. How can you be? How can I be your role model without my consent? <laughs> we are the both of us see, and we agreed that I should model you. <laughs> you adopted me without my contest. I was not in the ballot box when you were choosing <laughs> role models. <laughs> ah! Oh, man, man. <laughs> ah! <laughs> For those of you who don't know what Omeme um, man, man is, Omeme um, is. <laughs> flexible people once your heart is hard in you are no way to destruction there are people no message we make them pay tight there are members of branches that don't pay tight they don't pay tight you think there's a man called john rockefeller he was the first american billionaire in dollars you know the secret item john rockefeller today there's a rockefeller foundation that's the man so they say Rocky Feller, he was the first American billionaire. Do you know how much he was paying as tight? 90%. He asked his pastor, what do I pay as tight? Pastor said, God, 10%, you 90. He said, the one that created me, the one that gave me life, the one that gave me breath, the one that gave me existence, will take 10, I will take 90? No, I will take 10. Let him take 90. From the 10 left, a pastor's life turned around. He was passing and just saw a church and just send somebody that send the send somebody transform today there is rockefeller foundation many years after he's dead every december every rockefeller descendant is giving one million dollars to celebrate christmas a man is dead his wealth is still flowing tithing where we tithe forget about commandment forget about the law of the old and the new our tithing is a proof that we reference god tithing displays the law of your department of what we spend weekly now you're looking hey if I open up that department so you see what lives every week, they give send me bees in millions. And one person can handle that. Only few of our pastors, about two or three, will say, throw out a Beniza, this money for diesel. Am I correct? They will send it. Carry it as responsibility. And I can tell you, their life is shining. Only few will say, throw out amazing grace. This is the money for us. Not that their money is enough, oh, but they, they should support. And there are some people who are planning to steal from the diesel. <laughs>